Hello everybody and welcome back to Thane Creos! <laughs> yes! Sorry, welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Anyway, Thane and Samara are my favorite. Uh, they're my favorite characters in the whole game, truly. Um, but now we've kind of passed the halfway point, at least for um, main mission-y things. And... Um, Oh, nice, yes, that's right. So now we've unlocked a whole bunch of letters and stuff like that. Anyway. So, I, I know I said it in the last one, but I really can't emphasize enough how hurtful it was that Caden was so upset with me when I first played. And it's something that's kind of stuck with me and has colored my perception of him. Also, it's not even just that. It's not even necessarily Mass Effect 2, but it's how he treat he continues this behavior into Mass Effect 3 to the point where it just I just want to drop kick him through an airlock, which I think is just really hilarious that I could like love somebody so much in like the first game and like be in love with them and then to get my heart broken in two. And like truly when I first played, like I was like, well, I, I was kind of hoping I'd be able to romance Caden again, right? And then like he just like absolutely comes out and like decks you in the face <laughs> emotionally and I was like, "Oh my gosh," you know, and and then, uh, and then, because I didn't know who, I didn't know I was going to be getting another set of dossiers, and then the next set of dossiers shows up, and I go meet this assassin, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> like, oh boy. I am, I am ready to go. Also, I need to do so much more mining. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh... <laughs> Let's see. Shepard, how can I help? Have you got a minute to talk? Later, updating crew dental records. All Cerberus personnel have cyanide capsules and molars. Primitive ocular nerve flashbangs harder to disarm. Anything else? Cyanide? We're still using cyanide pills? I'll let you work. We'll be here if you need Also, to. like, you work for an organization that's like, yo, put this in your teeth, and you're like, okay, that's fine. Commander, sorry I'm a little unfocused. Personal matter. It won't affect my duties. Uh, always have time for my crew. What is it? As I said, it's a personal matter. I don't want to waste our time if it turns out to be a goose chase. Well, I got pinged by a ghost the other night. Family. I'm listening. My private log got an update about the Hugo Gerns back, the ship my father served on. It sent an SOS last week, reporting a crash and requesting a rescue. Shepard, that ship went missing 10 years ago. I hadn't talked to my father for three years before that. I buried everything but a body. Now, I'm not convinced it isn't just some automated distress signal ticking over. It's been too long. I'd think you'd be more excited that your father might be alive. He wasn't around enough for me to have bad memories. It's an old, well-healed wound. But if he's actually alive and needs help, I also want to note that it's not normal procedure for distress calls to be routed to the Normandy. This was passed to my personal log through Cerberus filters. Any signs that this is a Cerberus front? Who passed this to you? I doubt the elusive man would let a direct operation stake hold this long. If there's a link, it's probably just about money. Cerberus needs diverse holdings to fund projects like, well, you. Me. And whoever sent this my way covered their tracks. Someone could be fishing for favors, or thought it would get under my skin. Who knows with that bunch? You didn't get along with your father? He made no apologies, I'll give him that. You make a mistake, you own up to it. Even if you keep making it. seems like a bad philosophy. Whatever problems we had were a lifetime ago. I've had ten years to get to where I am. And as far as I know, he's still a ghost. Like, it's like, I'll keep making the same mistake, but I'll keep acknowledging it's a mistake. I'm like, that doesn't make... That's not a very good... <laughs> that's not a very good philosophy. <laughs> Tell me about the Hugo Gernsback and what it was doing. Privately held frigate. I looked over the mission brief when it disappeared. Nothing stood out. Typical research and grab operation. Find an uncharted planet, stake a claim, and establish as large a presence as you can as fast as possible to shut out competitors. 
I think we can spare the time. Pass the coordinates to Joker. I appreciate that, Commander. I don't expect more than dusty old bones, but it'll be good to close the record. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, now is also the time not only where we get a bunch of letters, but everybody starts having thoughts about mortality. <laughs> Commander, you received... Incoming oh. message from Admiral Stephen oh, don't, don't talk to me. Commander Shepard, mm -mm. I need to discuss a sensitive I matter don't with you talk. I don't want to talk to you. I'll take this in my quarters. I don't want to talk to you. Dude, you you left me for dead. I was dead, but you abandoned freaking you propaganda tossed me out the window. Like don't you don't even talk to me, Hackett, and expect like I'm gonna be a good little soldier again because I'm technically decommissioned. Commander, thank you for your time. Also I'll keep he, this he brief. is still calling me commander. We have a deep cover operative out in Batarian space. Name's Dr. Amanda Kenson. Dr. Kenson recently reported that she found evidence of an imminent Reaper invasion. So why call me? Just this morning I received word that the Batarians arrested her. They're holding her in a secret prison outpost on terrorism charges. I need you to infiltrate the prison and get her out of there. As a favor to me, I'm asking you to go in alone. Dude, we haven't even talked about the fact we haven't you have we haven't talked in two years. I was dead. Why is he why? This is a DLC technically, just so you guys know, which is why it's a little abrupt. But like what this doesn't make any sense. Like he's just like he's calling me commander still. I'm dead. Like I was dead. I don't I mean, I guess I was never actually like taken out of the alliance, but when you're dead I mean you still keep your title sometimes when you die, right? Like he buried with honors and all that blah 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 but also he did contact me about the normandy crash site which i do need to do but i always say that until right before the um the normandy before the suicide mission because everybody else gets a like a loyalty quest right where they're like tying up loose ends and you gain their loyalty and they're like focused on the final mission and i always was like well it would be nice if Shepard had something like that and then i found this dlc and I, cause I think I didn't, I didn't have it when I first played it. Maybe I did, or maybe I found it while I think I found it while I was playing. Cause like I had to find the DLCs later, cause I only had the base game. And then the the Normandy crash site DLC, when you go there, that to me, and maybe I've already said this to you guys, but like that to me is Shepard's personal mission, where everybody else gets their own personal mission, and that Normandy crash site one is Shepard's, where she lays to rest the crew members that died and her ship, her beautiful ship, you know? I mean, you could have picked a bunch of other things that she maybe wanted to tie up, but to me, that that is her mission, and I think that's what the intent was. So, I always save it till right before the final mission. Mmm... Also, I think Dr. Amanda Kenson's in the novel, and I think she's actually romantically involved with Captain Anderson, if I'm thinking of the right woman. They went on a mission together a long time ago. Uh, Reaper. I thought the Alliance denies the Reaper threat. That must be some proof she found. Kenson's team found an artifact out in Batarian space. She believes it's a Reaper device, proof that the Reapers are indeed planning to invade. I've known her a long time. If she says she has proof, it's worth checking out. But me? I'm not enough proof? To be fair, having a secondary source approve of your message is good. But still, it's upsetting. What's Dr. Kenson actually doing out there? She's a deep cover operative, Shepard. We talk only when we have to. I'd heard she was investigating a rumor of a Reaper artifact in the system. Her last report said she'd found it. What else can you tell me about the operative? Amanda's a top scientist and Alliance agent working in Batarian space. It's a deadly assignment, and she's one of the few up to the challenge. She and I go back pretty far, Commander. I won't let her run away in a Batarian torture camp. And I'm your only hope. The Batarians won't take kindly to the Alliance breaking into a secret prison. This is not an Alliance operation. It's one person going in alone to save a friend. If it were an official mission, of course the Batarians would be upset. You keep this quiet, Shepard, and there's nothing to worry about. You see about. that look Shepard did? 
where he's like, this is not an alliance, you know, this is not an alliance mission. And she kind of looks down because she, she, talking to Hackett, I bet she would like kind of get back. Because to her, again, a lot of the events that happened with like Saren and her being an alliance soldier happened like days ago or like maybe like a month ago to her, you know, like she would get back in the swing of things talking with Hackett being thinking you know in her head she's like oh yeah I'm part of the alliance and then he's like this is not an alliance mission because the implied subtext there is that she is not alliance anymore even though he calls me he is calling me shepherd too but he called me commander <sighs> blah, 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 blah. I have a hell of a squad with me I'm sure they'd help out Jensen is my friend. If the Batarians see a squad of armed soldiers, they'll kill her. This is serious, Commander. Go in with discretion, or don't go at all. I do, I think I have to go in. Do I have to go in by myself? I swear I can keep, like, my two companions with me. Maybe not. I'll make this a priority. The prison is hidden underground at a Batarian outpost in Aratat. I'll upload the coordinates now. So, also, this is him going, like, behind... Once she's secure... Confirm her discovery. We'll debrief you when you're I'm back. not the alliance. I'm it. not alliance. Hack it you don't out. get to tell me what to do. He's not telling me what to do here, but like, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, we'll debrief you. I'm like, I'm not part of the alliance. You've made that perfectly clear. Me, Caden. But like, also, like, he's going under the table. Like, he's getting an outside operative, essentially, to do an alliance undercover mission. You know? It's like, oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's a little bit, it's a little bit frustrating. Miranda wants to yeah, I bet she does. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, uh, this is that one guy. They didn't weapons check good enough. I'm gonna carve your name instead of mine into my next victim is thanks. Haha, <laughs> got any of you did? You know how it goes. Dad taught me that he's gonna try to kill me. Please, actually, it would be better if you came after me first, then I could deal with you. Like I'm sending you, not like I'm sending you now though. Haha, <laughs> it's showtime. Look around for your name. I'll make sure you find it before I find you. Great. Uh... <laughs> it's so frustrating. There's nothing you can do about that. In particular, like, it's just like, oh, well, there's consequences to your actions. To Shepard, from Shadow Broker Intel. We're afraid, we're aware that your old friendly Artisoni has been hunting for the Shadow Broker for several years. We wouldn't mind helping her in that hunt, given the broker's past work for the collectors. We recently uncovered some information that might give Leo or Alita where to find the Shadow Broker's base of operations, but unfortunately, she doesn't have much faith in Cerberus Intel. If you visit Ilium and pass it on to her with a gesture of goodwill, we'd appreciate it. She doesn't have much faith in Cerberus Intel. Why would she? You guys go out of your way to make sure people are, like, unhappy with you. I saw the reports on Horizon, Commander. What you did was amazing. The report mentioned that Caden Alenko was there. How did that go? We've been through a lot. I wish we could have had more time together. Do you have strong feelings for him? What we had together is in the past now. I'm sorry. Parting ways with someone so close is never easy. I appreciate that, but I'll be okay. Anyway, how may I help you? <laughs> Bye. That'll be all. I'll be here if you need. Go talk to the time. Time to go talk to Joker and have him try to console me <laughs> in his ham-handed way. <laughs> Hey, Commander. It's, uh, pretty crazy the people you can run into out here, huh? I mean, it was probably a setup or something, but it was still good to see Caden. Staff Commander Alenko, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. You moved on. I can't blame him. Right, a mutual thing, <laughs> gotcha. Hey, you know, if you ever want to talk sometime, I hear Chambers is very... <laughs> You're a real pal. <laughs> I'm there for you. Up here. With my face. <laughs> I love that interaction so much. You're a real pal. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's see, who did we take? Okay, yeah. 
I assume everything's going well up here? This thing wants to fire me over a joke. Okay, I said I'd flash the AI core, but I was kidding. And we'd only lose a few systems. Nosy, Nosy ones. ones. To clarify, human resources adjustments are not actually under my authority. Then why? Why are you always picking on me? My replies were intended to provoke, though not to cause distress. Your reactions are atypical of most humans. You are interesting. Oh. It means you. She pushed your buttons to get a rise out of you. About time you were on the receiving <laughs> end. Yeah, great. I just got worked by the <laughs> It was not my intent to breed hostility, Mr. Moreau. But you did instigate our interaction. Okay, but think of it this way. Shut up. Like, <laughs> she's learning from you, Joker. You're teaching her bad things. That's it for now. See you, Commander. We're teaching her how to get a rise out of you. Oh, maybe we shouldn't leave Edie with Joker. He's not a good influence. Okay, they've talked to everybody in here. Oh my gosh, I want to go get... I'm not Kaden. Uh, they even look at me. Oh, dang it. I must have missed the one. Maybe but if we had come in here before Horizon, he would say something about how his family didn't make it. Or maybe he'll say it later, but... He does- he gets very upset, which is very understandable. I was just thinking about well, here you. I am. Edie has a wicked sense of humor. Or I should say, a really funny lack of one. Sometimes she seems like a person. But when it comes down to it, I can't get past her being a computer. This one security guy keeps staring at me. I think his name is Bert. I'm used to being watched by security. But they're usually staring at my eyes or watching my hands. I might have to start cloaking through the CIC from now on. Uh, if he's bothering you, I will put him out the airlock. I usually travel hidden away in cargo bays. It's nice to be able to look out a window you for a change. You could just stab him in the back. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have Or like, to talk you know, about. make it very clear that you being the most infamous, or not infamous, one of the most uh, non-famous thieves, in the best thief in the galaxy. Uh, doesn't have time to take any crap from you, from him. Commander, I very much enjoyed sharing that ice brandy with you. But I hope I wasn't too unprofessional. Brandy goes straight to my head. It's nice to see you let your hair down. Guess I hadn't realized how much those feelings needed airing. But I didn't give you much of a chance to vent. So tell me now. What do you think? Everyone's depending on us. We won't let them down. They just don't make them like you anymore, Shepard. Yeah. Well, promise me we'll share a bottle every year. The next one is on me. Yay, I'm so nice. Thank you, Commander. Rupert put the new supplies to good oh, use. Good. How can I help you, Commander? Do you have everything you need? Absolutely. Since you set up my kitchen with proper supplies, thanks again. Cool, cool. I won't take any more of your time. Back to work. Garrett. Oh, we should talk to Miranda. She's right here. Yellow. Shepard, I find myself in the unpleasant position of asking for your help. Lots of people I are. I don't like discussing personal matters, but this is important. Miranda, you're one of my crew. Tell me what's on your mind. You remember what I told you about father building a dynasty? There was another reason I went to Cerberus for protection. I have a sister, a twin, and he's still hunting her. Cerberus has kept her safe until now. She's living a normal life on Ilium, safe and hidden from my father. So you think your father's tracked her down? Precisely, Commander. My sources indicate he knows that she's on Ilium. I've tried to keep her hidden without impacting her life, but I'm out of options. He's too close. I need to relocate my sister's family before it's too late. What do you know about your sister? She's my genetic twin. We're identical, but she deserves a normal life and she's going to get it no matter what. Did your sister's family know about this? Are they okay with being relocated? They know nothing. They're completely uninvolved. Normal. I told Cerberus and they're coming up with a positive reason to move the family. What do you need me to do? My father is extremely persistent. 
I'd like to go to Ilium when Cerberus is moving the family to make sure none of his agents get too close. My contact's name is Lantea. She'll be waiting for us in the lounge near the Nurse Astra docking bay. Uh, it really tugs on my heartstrings how much, how involved she's with her sister. Kind of like how Ashley is involved with her sisters. Because, like, I am the oldest of five daughters. And I'm very attached to my siblings, my sisters, you know? And, like, I don't know, I, I can see as the older sibling, like, she would do anything, even sacrifice her own, you know, happiness or, like, life or whatever. Like, I feel like part of the bargain for keeping her sister safe was that she would work for Cerberus, right? So she's willing to do that um, to make sure her sister can live a normal life. Oops. What's this area? That's not ship. what I wanted to do. The gunnery control station. The ship's batteries are controlled from here. The combat... Shepard. Need me for something? Have you got a minute? Can it wait for Are a you bit? serious? I'm in the middle of some Are you serious? Really? Still? Talk to you later, Garrus. I'll be here if when you need. When do we me. get our Garrus special mission? Really? Oh my gosh. I was expecting him to be like, play to me. Tell me all about how we have to go hunt down Sedonis. Shepard, I was just waxing goddamn nostalgic. To yourself? To, to yourself? <laughs> There's no one down here. Tough fight on Horizon. I fought slavers and kidnapping rings, but nothing like that. Some slavers took a little girl on a colony in the Skepsis system. Girl woke up, fought her way out, got picked up by my band while on her way to Omega. Yeah? Eight years old. She'd have had no chance on Horizon. He sounds like he was impressed. <laughs> she probably had, I mean, yeah, like to get up, to be eight years old, and fight your way away, you know, get away from a slaver ring, and then, like, <laughs> ask a Merc band for help. Like, <laughs> take some guts. I was shadowing this rookie on an infiltration run to an eclipse base on Tatus. Good kid, but he had no business handling a rifle. In the shuttle on the way down, he puked in his helmet. We hit some turbulence, and with all the crap sloshing around, he thought he'd been shot in the uh, head. Oh, that's... Went back to the Alliance. Here he's a governor now. Uh, uh, that's disgusting. Oh my gosh. And of course he's a governor. I should let you go. Talk more later. Went shepherds. back to the Alliance, but as a governor? Like, they don't have, like, they don't do like that. They're military only. But he probably like served a couple terms or, or whatever, like a term in Alliance military, and then got a posting as a governor. Hey. Hey. Tell me about you, Jack. What are you up to? Still checking out your ship. Wouldn't mind putting her through her paces when you're not around. No. Uh, wait, uh. I doubt Joker would appreciate that. At least not while we're working. Relax. Joyriding doesn't have the thrill it used to. Besides, if I wanted it, I'd take she could. it. That's so. Uh, I've been around. Ran with gangs, wiped out some gangs, joined a cult. Kept the haircut. I learned how to survive and not be a victim. It's hard to imagine you in a cult. That usually involves a lot of rules. I was looking for answers. Drugs and sex and going to a better place. A better place, right. It was all about money. They wanted to take a colony, shake the suckers down to fund their spread, and guess who was their ace in the hole? They were just like the rest. Didn't give one shit about me. What'd you do when you found out? What do you think? Mm -hmm. You must have met some good people, too. Everybody wants something, and because of that, everything is fair game. Murder, assault, kidnapping, drugs, stealing, arson. Not at all, and that's the boring shit. Piracy, theft of military craft, destruction of a space station, and vandalism. Vandalism. That was a good one. I'm surprised you'd even mention vandalism in that bunch. That's what the Hanar call it when you crash that space station I mentioned into one of their moons and make a new crater. They really liked that moon. Oh my gosh. Military's a hard target. Bet that made you some friends. 
Shouldn't have left the thing unlocked. Besides, parades are boring. I helped. <laughs> a space station? You're pushing what I can believe. Ain't saying it was easy. Not everything is spur of the moment. Sometimes you gotta work to give people what they deserve. Had some people I hung with for a while. Outlaw colony. Felt like they were like me. Guess that made us a nice target. Turians think they know something about a scorched earth response. Fuck them. Yeah, I think truly the only time she, she met, like, uh, and you know, I think you'll see him, you can potentially see him on her tattoos, but there was two women that she met um, that she considered, like, her sisters, um, who were very similar to her in a lot of ways, you know? And uh, I can't, I don't know exactly what happened, I don't know if she says it, but they die. And um, she tattoos them onto her body and then destroys uh, everything. <laughs> you were a pirate, too? Ties in with the kidnapping. If you hijack a passenger ship and don't kill everyone, anyway. Good lesson. Simpler to just kill them all. Yeah, but then you don't get the money. Do you ever wonder if you could have done things differently? No. Shouldn't you? There's no reason I should be alive, but I am. You know why? Instinct. It's worked for me so far, and I'm not gonna change. Hey, Shepard. No one's ever asked me about this shit. It's strange to talk about. So fuck you. And thanks for asking. Uh, see, Jack, her whole, I love that that's very much, Jack is growing to like me at least a little bit. Um, but it is like, you can tell she's been very lonely. Like she joined the cult to try to find a purpose. Like she's, she's this incredibly powerful woman that like people have been like using for her whole life and no one's ever looked at her and seen her. You know, and that's what she kind of, she basically says, right, that, like, nobody's ever appreciated just for her. She doesn't appreciate her powers or the fear she can inspire or whatever, whatever, whatever. So, um, I think if you renegade your way through with Jack, it's pretty good, too, because she, she, like, um, you kind of, like, talk, like, bad A to bad A, I guess. Like, I don't know, you know, <laughs> but, like, I did it, like, I did it once, but I can't quite remember, but it is, um, like, it works out, you know? Um, but Paragon, I do like Paragon with Jack, at least I, I gradually get more into Paragon with Jack to kind of be like, you know, hey, like, I can't fix everything that happened, I can't change what happened, and I'm not going to change you as a person, but like, here's who I am as a person, and like, you're good with me, man, like, don't, like, I don't know, you don't need to, like, you know, keep your defenses and everything, whatever makes you feel safe, but like, you know, we can talk a little bit and it'll be cool, you know? Hey picked up a lot of resources. Can you use them to help against the collectors? I ran across the schematics for making L5X implants. Still got them in my head. You want to know what I need? Not usually my thing, but I've learned how to get things done on my own. She can just freaking make L5X implants. It's fine. It's fine. No big deal. Hey. I picked up a lot of resources. I figured out those L5Xs. Consider yourself lucky. It's not like I keep a library of this shit around. What do you think of Miranda and Jacob? Jacob doesn't know who he is, but that's not my problem. Miranda's a Cerberus bitch. Knew that before she opened her mouth. Mm-hmm. What do you think of our mission? I don't care. I'm out to survive it, then cut loose. I'm surprised- I should go. Yep. I'm honestly surprised she hasn't cut loose already. I'm honestly surprised she hasn't taken the ship. Like, I don't know. I think maybe she's like, she was like processing the Cerberus data that we gave her and like I don't know hopefully she's decided that like she's just gonna kind of wait and use our resources I hear that Rupert is actually cooking some good meals lately yeah right that scunner couldn't serve a good haggis if his life depended on it but all haggis tastes like ass anyway aye but in the right hands it could taste like mighty fine ass <laughs> yucky <laughs> My son? Shepard. Just checking in. Making sure you're acclimatizing. <laughs> I was just... <laughs> just sitting here thinking... <laughs> the picture, huh? I'm finally starting to get it. There's a tank imprint. The battle at Canrum. A dead Turian. Stripped. You don't see them out of their armor much. A Krogan boot on his head. And a claw hammer. It's under the brow plate, pulling it back, right? Eyes have gone black, and you see tension in the muscle. 
You can feel it ready to snap. I get it. Canrum isn't ringing a bell. Death of Shiagar, female warlord. Turians killed her so they were hunted down and made examples. Even if they won the war, it was the last push before the rebellions ended. Maybe I had to be there, but I don't get the joke. Mm -hmm. There's no joke. It's just great. It's a Turian, and he's being torn apart for what they did. I felt nothing before, but now I get it. It was a good fight. The enemy was destroyed to punish them all and send a message. I get it. I hate Turians. I thought you'd be glad. Mm, what it? So... I, I know that this option doesn't doesn't I don't, I don't really like the way that one plays out. I think we'll try this. Is this Krogan insight? Realizing you hate someone enough to justify torture? It's not torture. He's dead. But sure, it's wrong. The crime against us was bad, so the message had to be equal or worse. It's not Okir's hate, and it's not who they are. It's what they did, and how bad the answer had to be. Anyway. I'm still figuring what? where I fit, but it made me laugh. Nothing else really on my mind, Shepard. Yeah, he doesn't find it funny. He's just like, oh, I understand, you know? Also, why did I get Renegade? I took a neutral option. Oh, I'm getting nervous. Not that one. Oh, jeez, I'm getting nervous. I need to be careful. Uh, I know I need to be careful, especially with Zaid, because it can be hard to do the Paragon option if you wait too long to do it on his personal mission. Um, that was everybody, right? Jack, Grant, Zaid. I fed him fish. Jacob, Morden. Talk to Morden, right? He didn't have it. Yeah, he didn't have anything to say. Uh, frick, oh my gosh, I was like, it's like only like 27 minutes. No, it isn't. Okay. <laughs> eh, I keep going over 30 minutes. Anyway, uh, after this, now that we have gone through and talked with everybody, as we should in a Mass Effect game, it is now time for me to go and acquire my new husband, and I am so excited. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Anyway, so we're going to end this episode here, but in the next episode, we're going to go get Thane Krios, and it'll probably be a two-parter, because it takes a while to get through to get him. Um, but oh my gosh, I'm so excited to heal the balm, like put a balm on the wound of my heart from Caden. I'm going to go stare at Thane in HD, and it's going to be the greatest day of my life. This is what I've been waiting for ever since somebody was like, there. I was like, I was always like, I don't care about a Mass Effect remaster, meet remaster. I want a Dragon Age one. Like, Mass Effect has aged just fine, blah, blah, blah. I never, ever, ever wanted it for like a year. And then, this was many, this was like several years ago. And then somebody brought up, they were like, but what if you could see Thane in HD? And I was like, you have sold me. You've sold me on the entire concept, and now I want a Mass Effect remaster. And that was years ago. <laughs> and now the whole reason that I've been playing this is coming up. <laughs> but anyway, sorry for the long episode again. But thank you all for watching so, so much. I appreciate your support. And I want to give a shout out to my patrons, uh, especially to my sapling patrons, uh, Scala Munker, thank you so much, and Reese Galita, thank you so much. I appreciate your guys' support. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Christopher, who is my tree tier uh, patron, and who is the super bestest. And I'm so excited you get to say thank you, so I know you haven't seen the Mass Effect stuff much, and it's stuff. just so excited. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you all again uh, for watching and supporting me, and I hope to see you on the next one.